All right, as a last experiment, kind of pushing the edges of what we can do with our digital painting, is we flattened it, and then we're playing with some filters in a new file. And what I love about this plastic wrap one is it will give a physicality to each of your strokes. So those simple one color standard brush strokes now become kind of gouges into a paint surface. And you can play with the depth, you can play with the smoothness, you can play with the highlight strength. Maybe I'll increase that a little bit. But if you do it too much, it just looks ridiculous. Right. But what I like about this is not that I think this is the best finish necessarily. It's that this gives me a whole other set of kind of visual data to play with for my final painting. So if I say OK, remember this is on an experimental one. So now I've changed those pixels. Filters are dangerous. And the one I only recommend we, we use consistently is Gaussian Blur as a, as a tool. But this is to really explore. But now what if I take this and then I play with color separation like we did for digital coloring. So I can go to Window, I can look at Actions, I can go to the Actions I downloaded for Carl's color separations, I can go to CMYK Full, like choosing that VHS tape off of the shelf, and then I can play it. And voila, in one file it gives me offset CMYK color separation, not of my original, but of the the weird plastic wrap version, <laughs> which is going to make it actually crisper. And notice how this is intentionally offset, how the cyan layer here is intentionally moved off a little bit from everything else. So I can set these things individually. Now what I like to do is take all of those, this is a workflow I like, put them in a group, close these others, I don't need black, I don't need magenta, I don't need yellow. If you want to see how I did that, remember we had that cyan, that color separation uh, tutorial back when we were doing our spot illustration. But there's the action that you can download from the class Dropbox that will do it all for you. But I want you to understand where these angles come from, where these shapes come from, and why. It's to get these kind of what are called Gaussian roses when they blend. All right, now I can take that whole thing and I can map it on to this original. So I'm going to swoop it out, grab that group, bring it onto here, move that in, because my actions are at professional standard 300 and my studio setting is at 350. I have to grow it a little bit, but that just makes it a little softer at the edges, which is actually nice for bit mapping, which is so solid. So it actually makes the dots look a little bit cleaner in finished printing. And then I have to hand set it. I have to place it. And I want it to misregister a little bit. Like squeeze it in, maybe even hold down shift and warp it a little bit. All right, now, I can play with blending modes. And it's really becoming this kind of patchwork, right? There's overlay, there's hard light, vivid light. I think overlay would make sense for it. There we go. We get kind of a mixture of all those things. I could always turn off and on certain levels if I want. Maybe I dim the opacity of the underlying layer a little bit. Now I'm going to put both of these into a group. This is all experimental. And then I'm going to open up my finished painting. Because remember, this was all done on a flattened copy. And I open up that PSD file. I want the most recent one. Let's see, file, open from my cloud file. There it is. And now I'm going to swoop this out and bring that group onto my original. 
let it kind of snap in. And now I've got all kinds of tools to play with. Put on a white background. And now I can play with the blending modes, the opacities, let's see. In all, I think I want to lighten it a little bit. Yeah, I think probably overlay is the best. And then play with the opacity. And see what that does when I zoom in. Right. See how it really brings some of those colors to life. But I might also bring it down and kind of imbue it, sandwich it between two layers of finished painting like I have. And if I want, I can always limit what shows. This is kind of my favorite part of digital painting, is stripping things away and seeing how much is actually needed from these different layers. And in this way, it feels very fresh to me and very much like a traditional painting process. All right, so let me just pick a finish. Maybe take this down, maybe change it to dissolve blending mode and take it down to about 60. Turn on some of these other backgrounds. There we go. A little bit bright, brighter in there. Let's bring this up with overlay. Nice. Yeah, so everything should feel like an expression of your hand. Right. But then also using the digital tools in ways you find interesting. And I, I like that paint surface so much better than what it was before. All right, so now I'm going to save it. Remember, I haven't limited anything. It's all in layers and groups and different things. I can always unravel the group and play with the color separations individually and just I have every option in the world. But once I'm happy with it, I'm going to save it. I'm also going to save it to my computer. So save as. Make sure you do it a copy onto your cloud and onto your computer as a PSD can always come back to it later. And then I'm going to save it as a JPEG under save a copy so I can put it onto Canvas. So it's going into downloads and move it to my desktop. And it is 11 by 14 inches by 350 pixels per inch. I can close this file. I've already moved that resource into my final. I can close my CMYK. Just things to play with. And then here is my final JPEG, which I usually mark as orange. And one last step is I can just double click it and open it in preview and use the adjust color options to play with some final 
adjustments. Like if I want to sharpen it, you can see the difference that can make. If I want to play with the mid-tone values, if I want to heighten the contrast, modify the shadows, you are creating this as you go. Maybe take the saturation down just a little bit. Darkening the shadows. Yeah, about there. Zoom in, see what that finish looks like. Think of all the different ways you got there. And then that's what you post to Canvas. So I'm just going to call this my final experiments. And I think why I love digital painting as an, an exercise, as something to enjoy to get you out of kind of creative paralysis is that you can see each step and you can always decide whether it's pushing you forward or not and you don't you don't lose the options of the previous steps and you can layer the steps together to get new and exciting examples so as we go into our presentation critique you want to be mindful of all the different things you did to try to have fun with your painting and then how you got to your finish. Right? Even if there's just one area that's finished and even if it's not finished. Because that becomes your personal workflow.